Hi, welcome to my latest video. Well, in this one, I'm going to show part one of my new application server build that I've talked about in a few previous videos. I got all the parts now, some that I had already purchased beforehand and others that I purchased at Micro Center just recently. And one that actually is carried over from probably almost two years ago now that I've never used, but I've been waiting for the right opportunity and this is it. So let me go over the parts. And if you stick around to the end, you'll get to see how some of this gets started. But one thing I do want to point out that this build is going to be very, very detailed. I'm going to go step by step. It's going to be meant to be a full tutorial for anybody who's never built a PC before using the most modern parts that you can get as of today toward the end of June, 2022. Well, let me start with the motherboard. Actually, the motherboard that I chose and I'll explain why is the Asus Prime Z690P Wi-Fi. The main reason I got this, it was a reasonable cost. I don't need the fancy bells and whistles for making overclocking easier or something that I plan on doing a lot of on this particular system. Although it is one that I am projecting that I will do some overclocking on, maybe not initially, but ultimately. And this board does support that. It just doesn't have a lot of the features that a true overclocker would like to see. And you'll see that as we get into it. But what it does have that some of the more expensive ones in this don't is I have three PCIe slots that can all support times four. Actually, it has four, but only three of them I'll be able to use, as you'll see when I start putting it together, because the first two are too close together and the video card will block both of them. Use one and block the other one. But the other two, the other two that are here, one will have my 10 gig network card and the other one will have my Elgato 4K60. I'm going to have that in here as well, because this machine is not only going to be an application server, but it'll be able to also support being used as either a editing slash rendering PC or a gaming PC or just a general office PC as needed. And I'll show you how I'm going to get that done. Now, the CPU is the best you can get today. It'll change in a couple of months, but this is the core i9 12900KS. It is fast. It can run with at least two cores running at over 5.2 megahertz. And overall, it's one that was very carefully binned. And for those of you who don't know what binned is, I'll explain it a little bit later into this video and I'll pop it up on the screen now. Basically, they save the best for last and they charge more for it. This one costs a couple of hundred dollars more than the stock Intel i9-12900K. Okay, look at a fancy little package they put into it and everything, right? Nice little gold box to it. And we'll see that being used in the, first, the next video actually being put onto the motherboard. Then I got myself 64 gigabytes of G-Skill non-RGB. It just wasn't available right now. And uh, probably I don't really need that for this particular build, as you'll see when I get into it. There'll be some RGB already in there, but this is 64 gigabytes on two 32 gigabyte sticks. And this is DDR5, the fastest you can get. Then I also have a PCIe 4 SSD from Samsung, the 980 Pro, and this is two terabytes. So it'll, it's very fast, believe me. So those are the key four parts to this. And I got those just recently. The other ones that I'm going to show you, I've had for a while. For example, the first one that might raise any questions, and I might have to replace it in a future version of this build, another part to this build, let's say, is the actual cooler. Right now I'm going to be putting in this cooler, which is a Lick Max 3. It has full RGB on it, three fans, and it's a 360 degree. And it'll go up on the front of the case. Now, it's got decent reviews, but not fantastic reviews. So we'll have to see exactly how it cools things down. And I've had this for a couple of months now. I bought it on sale, I think, from Newegg. The other thing I have here, let me just show it while I got it, is a keyboard. Very similar to the one I have that I've shown before on my existing editing rig over here. It's RGB and it's from Havit. And it's a, this one is a full size as opposed to the one that's on my 
on my backup editing rig slash streaming rig is a reduced size. It doesn't have the numeric keypad on the right hand side. This one does have it and this one's entirely in white, which you may have noticed by this case that's showing here. This is going to be a white and black themed build and I'm going to go white with the keyboard and mouse which are both in here. I'll open that up a little bit later as I start to use it but I'll keep it in the box for now like most of these parts. Then I also have some people are not going to like this but I'm going to be using both of these five and a quarter inch bays. One of them I'm going to be putting a full DVD Blu-ray read writer from LG. Now this is tr tried and true. I already have it on a couple of my other PCs. I don't use it that often, but I have used it. Not just for purposes of uh, you know, creating DVDs or Blu-rays, but also you never know when you have um, something that they've sent you in that format, that it's easier just to flop it in and read it into the system that way, as opposed to going and searching it out on the internet and trying to find the alternative way, because that doesn't always work. So I always want this as a backup. The other thing I have is for the second five and a quarter inch bay, this is going to be a hot swappable bay and it allows you to put either a two and a half inch SSD, or it, could, it may be a hard disk as well, but nobody buys two and a half inch hard disk anymore. They'll buy the SSD version of it because they're actually cheaper or a three and a half inch hard drive. Most likely this will be restricted to the SSD version of it. Similar to what I've been doing on my test bench when I load different operating systems. I want to be able to use that to load a new base operating system temporarily to bring this system up to a secondary usage or tertiary usage. Let's see what else. I got some replacement fans because in addition to the three fans that will be covered by the cooler, I want to put other fans this is going to be a highly cooled PC that's going to be on most of the time. So basically there's going to be at least six fans running and what I have here is three more black RGB fans that I'll be able to use. And that'll match the fans that are on the cooler. And these will be RGB and all of them will be able to be controlled for both the RGB and the PWM because all these fans are PWM, these three included, all by the motherboard and there's enough connections in order to support that. And then let's see, oh I'm also going to make it a little bit fancy. I got myself some white PSU extension cables. I'll open this up so we can take a look at this one if I can get it open. Whoops, I take it back, they're not white. I did consider doing white but I decided to get black and gray. So these cover every possible cable that I'll need for my PSU including two 8-pin cables for the actual motherboard itself. Although this particular motherboard only uses one full 8-pin and another 4-pin for the 12 volts to the motherboard CPU, this will be able to support that as well. Plus it'll allow for three PCIe cards and, and the standard other cables that would be showing within the case from the outside. So it's got cable extensions too. And then I think the only thing I haven't covered then is the video graphics card. Now this is going to be a temporary. We have a new line of graphics cards coming out from NVIDIA, the 4000 series, and that's relatively soon. But until then I have this one sitting on the shelf, a 3070 Ti. And that'll be going in here temporarily to get this PC going. Now I have considered, and this still may happen, I may take my 3080 out of my streaming PC back here and use that in here instead and then take this one and put it into my streaming rig because that's really you know what I primarily use this for and as a backup editing rig so that would probably work out well but we'll see how it goes in the first build phase I'm not going to do that I'm going to put this one into this new PC and then the last thing that I didn't include is the power supply and this one I've also had for at least three months. I bought myself an EVGA 1000 watt PSU. And this will be able to supply more than enough power for all of what's included in this setup. Now, that's the final internal components. There is still the case itself, and it's been sitting here. I've been referring to it. This is not a new case. It has never been put into a build permanently yet. I did review it and I'll put the, the link to it down at the end of this video 
So you can actually see the full review of this that I'd done previously when I first bought this case. But it's been sitting on the shelf waiting to be the case for my supercomputer. And what I have here is close enough to that. This is my supercomputer that I'm building here. It'll be running, as I said in previous videos, VMs to get everything done. At any given time, I'll probably have seven or eight different VMs running on this. And this will find a nice home in the corner and it'll sit there. I will put a monitor on it. It will have 10 gig networking and the 10 gig networking card. You've seen it before. I have a couple of different ones that I've never used that'll go into this build. But obviously I'm going to test it initially with the one gig that's on the mother. Actually, it's got a 2.5 gig on the motherboard. So I'll be testing it with that first. And then I'll switch to the 10 gig once I know that that works. Again, that's why I wanted the extra PCIe slot. This is the Corsair Carbide, what is it, Air 540. It's an old case, although this one is relatively new. It's been sitting in the box 95% of its life, except for the review that I did on it, where I did put a PC in here and test out its capabilities in general. But other than that, it's not really been used. That's why there's no dust or anything on it, because it's been inside a nice black case that this is wrapped in. And uh, it'll finally be finding a home in, for this PC. So those are all the parts that I wanted to cover in this particular video. I guess the thing to do next is to start setting up for part two, which will be putting on the main parts onto the motherboard.